So this is uh, my balcony pigeon. There are two of them actually. So uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm going to be posting stuff about um, classical music, other stuff that I do. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. This video was sponsored by Ludwig van Beethoven. Watch till the end of the video to find out how you can get early exclusive access whenever Beethoven drops a new album. Just kidding. Beethoven is dead. And so am I after editing this video. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm, my name is Kareem and I'm a classical musician. I play the flute and the piano, and for most of my uh, channel content, I think I'm going to be centering it on classical music and some uh, some of those stuff. Maybe interviewing some of my friends, talking about uh, things related to classical music. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, please subscribe to my channel. Now this video is kind of unusually long, and um, it's also quite technical, but I thought I would start out my channel with something that might be useful to, to you guys during this um, during this pandemic. And as a classical musician, we don't really have much um, opportunity to perform on stage uh, when, when everything is kind of closed. So we had to do different kinds of things. And uh, so during this pandemic, me and my, my family and some of my friends, we live streamed a couple of, we live streamed four concerts, um, four classical music concerts. And it went pretty well, it was a fun experience, one of them was even a charity, so we raised some money for a good cause, and uh, I, I kind of really enjoyed it. I, 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 won't, I don't really miss concerts anymore, actually, that much. Uh, and so, for, for those of you who are watching this video, maybe you're classical musicians, maybe not, uh, but I would like to show you from, from the beginning to the to end how, um, how exactly I did it. So this is a tutorial. And I, I learned a lot of different software while doing that and I was also you know, jumping around between tutorials and forums and websites and everything and I would like to combine all of this from beginning to end in one video so that you guys can also live stream your own event or concert. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Also, um, the day I was uh, filming that, um, the, the tutorial, I was pretty tired so forgive my, uh, my very moody facial expression. I was just tired, it was 9 p.m. Yeah. So for this, uh, for, for streaming, you will preferably need a laptop or a computer, uh, not a Chromebook because you'll have to install a program here. I mean, maybe there's a different way to do that, but it's actually more difficult. Um, and I'm not going to be covering that. And not a phone because on the phone, the best case scenario is just going to be stressful and more difficult. So if you have a laptop or a computer, a Windows or Mac is absolutely fine. Oh, and also, also you need um, you would need a YouTube channel, uh, so you can go ahead and create yours if if you don't have one yet. Uh, just a couple of clicks, sign into Google and stuff. So let's um, let's get started. We're gonna have three steps. So first, we're gonna go schedule our live stream on YouTube. After that, we will configure our streaming software, more on that later. And after that, we'll connect our streaming software with YouTube and we will get um, a stream. So let's go. Let's open Google Chrome or whatever browser you use um, and uh, open YouTube. I mean, I did that on Google Chrome all, all four times, so I mean, I could recommend that. And if you're signed into your YouTube channel, you will have this button over here that says create. So that's where we're going to go and we're going to click on this button. Now, uh, a little disclaimer uh, for you. Um, when, uh, if you just created your YouTube, ta YouTube channel and you've never streamed anything before, you will take 24 hours to enable live streaming. Honestly, I don't know why it does that. Uh, it says that uh, uh, for the first time enabling live stream may take up to 24 hours and once you've enabled that, you can go live inst instantly and whenever you want, so then you have uh, no limitations. But at the beginning, it, you have to just like, click a button or something, that's how it was for me. And uh, after 24 hours, you can come back and your live streaming will be enabled. Now, uh, also another disclaimer before you begin is that you have to do a lot of uh, testing before you actually go live. To uh, do uh, several tests, that's what I did, because there's always something that you will overlook. You have to adjust the audio. Uh, maybe uh, the audio levels, whatever, 
um, make sure that the video is good, that the internet connection is good. You have to have a strong Wi-Fi connection for this. And um, yeah, so do a lot of testing. Now let's go ahead and um, and start doing stuff. So um, we press this button, uh, and you can upload a video. That's for uploading videos. We're gonna go live. And uh, it's gonna bring, for the first time, I think it will probably bring you to this interface over here. And uh, this is intimidating at first, obviously, because there's a lot of buttons and drop downs and switches and everything. You, uh, uh, I'll explain this later. Let's, um, let's go to this uh, calendar button over here. And we're gonna schedule a stream. Well, because the calendar icon stands for, you know, scheduling. Uh, for you, it's gonna be everything here is gonna be empty because you didn't do anything before. So we're gonna click, click on create new, and we're gonna add a title, which is we're gonna say. Um, I don't know. Great stream. So yeah, we uh, just do do all those settings and stuff, and. Um, now uh, press create stream and this is gonna bring us to this weird interface i'm gonna explain that later uh for now let's not worry about that um let's go talk about our streaming software so basically what a streaming software is it's a thing that um uh, thing it's a thing that allows you to uh, a program um uh, that allows you to choose what you want to stream to youtube and i'll show you how to connect that later uh, it's like a basically like like PowerPoint, you know. There's different slides and stuff, and you can put whatever you want there, and you can choose what you want to stream. That includes video feeds with um, audio, and you can put images, videos, whatever. So that allows you a, a lot of flexibility. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to um, obsproject.com. It's also the first Google search result if you just search OBS or OBS download. And we're gonna go to this download tab over here. It's gonna detect your operating system, so Windows or Mac, and it's gonna... I'm not gonna do it right now because I already have OBS. And in fact, since OBS is a recording and streaming software, what I actually do is I am already recording my screen over here for this video on OBS, so I already have one of those open. I'm gonna um, go ahead and open another one, and we're gonna start configuring our stuff. Uh, when you install OBS, you're gonna click on the installation file, walk through all the process, you know, how you install programs. Uh, just click OK, OK, Next and stuff. And uh, at the end, it will ask you if you want to optimize OBS for streaming or for recording. And I would actually... What I did is I optimized it for streaming and it re still records quite well. Uh, no problems with, uh, with recording. Let's uh, see how OBS works. So here you, you can see our OBS interface right here, and um, this may look a little, you know, weird at first, but that's fine. So basically, as I said before, it's um, the interface of OBS Studio is kind of like Google Slides or PowerPoint if you've ever made presentations that way. So it's compo composed of like slides, and those slides are actually called scenes over here. So this is this panel where we have all our scenes, and every scene has uh, different elements on it. So uh, you start out with like a blank. Thing over here and you have one scene that's named scene if you want to rename a scene you can just right click on it and say rename or something I, I mean rename it to something and if you want to add scene of course it's over here and if you want to remove a scene you click on the scene and remove and right now I can do that because I have only one scene so we have the scene for example we want to add stuff on it so we can actually you know stream something so to add, to add an image or a video over here you suppose you have to add um, a source because that's what sources do and we're gonna click on this plus icon over here that's gonna um, leave us a menu of what sources we can add so let's for example add an image source for now there are all of those I can't explain all of those right now because um, it's a little long but uh, most of them are pretty self-explanatory and you just have to um, uh, figure out how they work so let's add an image first click OK so this is gonna open the properties window for this image source, and if you ever close it, you can always access it by uh, right clicking, uh, right clicking on it, and saying uh, and clicking properties. And um, for now, the only property is obviously what image we're gonna do. So we're gonna browse our file explorer for uh, an image. This, the mountains. Let's add the mountains. 
And so as you can see, when, once we chose the file, it already added the mountains on our canvas over here. So uh, we're gonna click OK. And th those are our mountains. Now, what if we want our mountains to be like more zoomed in? So for every things that you add over here, there's a, there are those basic, those basic controls that are on screen. So you can use those to zoom in, uh, zoom out. I'm gonna do a little zoom in over here so we can see the mountains and you can move those around. So if you move those points over here like that, you can zoom in or out. If you move the thing, you can move uh, the image. I keep on saying thing. Um, if you want to see, here's some useful commands. If you want to crop, you have to hold down the Alt key, the Option key on a Mac, and um, move it. Uh, move one of those uh, um, points like that. So that's gonna crop the image. So I'm gonna leave it uncropped. And if you want to um, resize the image like while distorting it, so it doesn't keep the aspect ratio, uh, you'll see what that means. Uh, you can hold down Shift and move one of those points. So that's going to resize the image, but it's going to look distorted a little bit to only, uh, for example, change the width and not the height. So that, those are some commands. And if you touch it again without the shift key, it's going to restore um, to the normal ratio. So we're going to leave a mountain image like this. Um, nice and pretty. So our, some of the other sources we, want, we would want to add, probably, of course, if you're live streaming a concert, you would want to add, uh, for you as the host, a, a video and an audio. So let's do that. We're gonna add a, um, a video capture device. A video capture device is a, just your webcam. So we're gonna add that. Click OK. And it's gonna choose... Uh, now this one is ugly because that's my built-in computer webcam. But for the purposes of this, it's fine. We're gonna hit OK. There are a lot of properties over here. You might want to, if you think your camera is not having the right, it's not detecting, it's not detecting your, the right resolution for your camera, you can switch it to custom and put whatever resolution you want. But usually it just detects the default one, which is, which is fine. Uh, you can click OK. You can put this wherever you want. Actually, to keep it simple, on the during the concert, I just during the concerts that we did, I usually just put it full screen. But let's just put it in the corner, just like that. And for now, the people who uh, who will be watching this will actually not be hearing any audio because uh, if, if you notice, I only put the video uh, input capture, but not the audio. Let's insert an audio over here. Audio input capture. That's uh, it, it has a microphone icon on it, so let's insert that. And as you can see, what happened is this this, this little green bar over here appeared. That moving green bar means that there is audio. Now if you move this, you'll see that the green bar just drops down and there's no audio that the people who will be listening to our stream will actually hear. No one is going to be listening to our stream. That's, that's, uh, that's sad. Uh, but uh, when we unmute this, you'll see that the green bar is moving. Now, uh, when it's moving, that's great. That means that they will, they will hear audio. Now you won't hear any audio coming from any of the stuff that you put in here, obviously, because that would create an echo, especially if you're not wearing headphones. So um, yeah, it doesn't just play back the audio that it shows, but if you see the green bar moving, then the people who will be watching your live stream or your recording or whatever, that means the sound is registering and they will hear it. So hit okay. And if you want, you can go to, to properties or actually uh, in my version of OBS, uh, it's probably gonna be the same for you. Um, you'll have this drop down over here with some there's this properties button over here that will also bring you to properties some other options it's gonna have bring this drop down so if you have a specific microphone you would want to use for example like this is my built-in computer microphone for this tutorial I'm using a different one but um, uh, I'm gonna I can just choose this one and you can choose whatever microphone source you want you'll probably just have your built-in one unless you have a uh, another one that you plugged in. They just have way too much microphone sources over here. I don't know why I did that. Great, so this, so we, we basically con configured OBS Studio and let me just uh, walk you through a little more um, types of inputs. So we did a video and an audio so people will hear me like talk as a host. We have a, a cute background over image over here so let's not add uh, an, a video there. Just random video from my computer. And we're gonna add some random text. Text first. And go. We can resize that, put that wherever we want, and basically we have a scene. Now this will be pretty impractical uh, because um, 
you know, I have me talking in one scene and then the um, the video in the same scene. And you, as you can see from the media source over here, for the media sources, add another um, audio input. And that is, uh, you know, a little weird because there's going to be lots of audio at the same time. So that's not a practical scene that you would add. But that's, that's just what you could do. So you can choose whatever you want you put there. And for the last thing I wanted to show you is to add another scene, like another slide. You can add uh, you can add one. It's called scene two. You can rename it whatever you want later. We can add more um, sources. Uh, Battle droid wallpaper. And if you and if you want to like use uh, I don't know an intermission image or if you just want to add separate slides for every recording that's what I did, so that's uh, so you could do that so um, you can s switch between those scenes and the transition over here you can see those transitions it's set to fade so it's gonna fade into the next scene like that, that's pretty good you can also increase the the length of the fade if you want so it's gonna take longer see just a longer fade just like that and if you want. Let me reduce that a little bit. You can actually choose a different transition. You can there are tons of options. Let's just do add a luma wipe and just choose whatever you want. I don't know. Block and a little more softness. Preview the transition. It's gonna go like that. Invert it to the opposite way. Okay. I know it doesn't look perfect, but just just uh, it's up to you to play around with that. So uh, for the last thing I would like to show you a, a little bit of the scene collection from the concert that we did before. It's called Musical Imperatives and uh, it was a charity concert. We, we raised some money for a charity called Sleeping Children Around the World. That was, very, uh, that was a very fun experience. We had a lot of fun doing it and we also did a good thing so that's great. So this is the entire scene collection we had. I put a lot of recordings there, all the recordings that we had to because I wanted to switch, use them like to, as, as scene switches. This is the intro slide over here. It says musical imperatives. I actually did that in Photoshop because um, that's a lot, just a lot of text and, and uh, text effect. So this is an image. Uh, this is the, the rest of the image that I made in Photoshop. You could, you could obviously add all this text uh, separately. I was just lazy. And this is also separately added text so we can do that. Um, we have a little message from the director of the charity, and then after that we have our host camera, which showed a camera of me, which is now disconnected, so... Yeah, and then after that we had a ton of recordings that we would put and people would listen to. That's basically the behind the scenes of our concert, that's how it worked. Um, as you can see for the, for the video there was um, audio green bar moving, that's how I knew that, that something was happening. Oops, I think the microphone fell into the frame. Ah! I just noticed it now. That's fine. Anyway, uh, now that we're done with this part, let's go connect OBS Studio to um, our YouTube. So we can leave OBS Studio open for now, and we're gonna go back to YouTube. Now this interface, of course, if you scheduled your live stream for like 10 days after, you won't always have it, so I'll show you how to access it. So let's go back to just YouTube, and you're gonna click on um, your videos over here. That's gonna bring you to YouTube Studio, which is basically your creative, um, your creator space. And you can uh, analyze uh, how your content is going. Mine is, um, well, still at the beginner stage, but um, uh, click the subscribe button. How do they say? It? Click the subscribe button and it hit the like, whatever. You can go to your uh, content tab over here and then to live. And your scheduled uh, stream will appear here. It says, see, my live stream test, that's w the one that we did. I don't have a thumbnail yet, so it shows the default one. Um, and um, so here this is. You don't want to actually click on it because that's going to bring you to this little page over here. What you want to do is you want to click on this small button over here that says you in live control room. That's going to bring you to, you guess it, our live control room. So... Um, uh, my settings here are different. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new stream key. Uh, stream key. You won't have to do that because I just experimented a lot with my YouTube settings and stuff. But we, I just created a new stream key. That's how it's gonna be for you when you do it. That's why I did it. So um, 
Now, most of those stuff, you won't even have to change those. A normal latency is good, add a delay, you can... I usually add just 30 seconds, add a delay just to make sure that the connection... I don't know if that really helps. Uh, all of those stuff you don't need to change. You don't have to change this, you don't have to change any of that. Um, what you do need is this key right here. So, this is your stream key. It's like a, a highly protected password that if you show... If you want to like uh, show it, then YouTube is automatically going to uh, hide it in 10 seconds because that's how secret it is. Ooh. What we're going to do is we're going to use the stream key to tell our streaming software, OBS Studio, to go ahead and stream onto that video. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go back to OBS Studio. Uh, we're going to go to our... Um, yeah, I'm going to stream this concert again. Once again. And we're going to go to this intro slice where we want to start. And in YouTube, we want to copy this stream key. And let's just remember the first four letters just to make sure. Uh, to UPT. And here we want to go to the settings panel over settings tab over here. Click on that. And we're going to go to the stream tab. And this stream tab. Uh, it might be set by default. I don't remember where it's set by default. It could be, I don't know, like Facebook Live or whatever. You have to make sure that it's on YouTube slash YouTube Gaming. That's what I use for all of those, and it worked well. Uh, you don't have to change the server, just, just primary YouTube ingest server, that's good. Uh, you just select the stream key and paste the new one, Control V, or Command V if you're on a Mac, obviously. And you're gonna uh, hit, hit Show, just to make sure that it's the right one, and it is indeed the right one. The first four letters are matching with the one on YouTube, so, you know, always a little step to to make sure that you got everything right. And hit apply, and okay. Okay. Um, now that we've put our stream key uh, into OBS Studio, all we have to do now is to go um, and start streaming. So it knows where to stream. Uh, so we're gonna hit the start streaming button and believe it or not it's just as simple as that after you've went through the steps that I, uh, I told you You just start streaming and you will see this green button over here. That means it's starting to stream now I'm on a wireless network right now and It's uh, it's pretty strong because I'm in the living room. It's it's uh, cl it's close to, to the to the internet so to the, to the router so that's great I recommend if you can have uh, an, an Ethernet connection, like a cable internet, that's a good that's a good idea. I did the last concert on a wire on a wireless network, but make sure it's like 5G or something, or at least strong enough. Uh, and as I said before, I can't stress enough stress this enough. Do tests and try to do a test in the exact circumstances um, as uh, you're gonna be doing your concert. Anyway, let's check back into YouTube and nothing is happening, but suddenly. Uh, the thing happened where it says excellent connection and when it says excellent connection that usually means it's a good thing now uh, I added a delay of 30 seconds so that means it's gonna be there's gonna be a sh short delay and even if you don't add a delay of 30 seconds there's still going to be a short delay between your streaming and the on YouTube so if you switch a scene and you can and you can see that it doesn't switch on your uh, YouTube stream don't freak out it's it's uh, absolutely fine you're not doing anything wrong so, um, after about 15 to, to 30 seconds to 1 minute, depending on some circumstances, it, uh, it's gonna switch the scene. So let's, while we're in the preview, we're not live yet, actually. We just started streaming onto YouTube, and YouTube is receiving the data, but we're not live. People can't see us yet. But we're gonna, um, go switch a scene. So, for example, message from the director. And, um... Check back onto YouTube and of course it hasn't switched yet because first of all we have an added delay of 30 seconds and it, yeah, well it switched now. Was that even 30 seconds? I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how delay works but anyway, don't freak out because of the delay, it's just, it's just normal. It's nature, you can't do anything about it. So yeah, it's playing, so now let's switch back to the pre-concert slide and we're gonna wait um, for YouTube to switch there so we don't um, start streaming with uh, half of a, half a video starting to play. So you know, now it switches over here, and that's great. That's awesome. We can we can go live. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. It's unlisted uh, and scheduled. 
It doesn't matter what time we actually start it, because uh, it's just gonna wait for us, and we're gonna go live. It says going live, and it says you're live. Now there's a button over here that says end stream, you can end the stream whenever you want, I'm not gonna do this right now. Um, it's gonna say excellent connection, you have an analytics over here of people, um, how much people are watching, you have stream health, and it says stream is healthy, at the beginning there was no data, and now we have a healthy stream, that's basically the bible, right? At the beginning there was nothing and then something happened. And this is our main stuff, stream settings, we can't really change any of those in the middle of the thing. And uh, on the side, uh, as you can see, we have a live chat, and um, we can type stuff in the live chat and interact with our viewers. Hi guys! Thank you for watching my stream. Or something. And someone is going to reply to you. Hi, I miss you. Pretty sad, you know, being in a YouTube tutorial and talking to yourself like that. There we go. So that's our stream. Uh, we can switch our slides. And I'm just going to probably time lapse it in editing and switch some of the slides so you can see everything, how it, how, how it happens. And it switched. Okay, so as you saw in this quick uh, time lapse, uh, we can switch all the scenes, uh, go, back, go from OBS to YouTube, and just switch those scenes. I actually uh, recommend like plugging this into a dual monitor or something if you can. I mean, that's what I did sometimes. Sometimes you don't have that. Up. It doesn't matter, to be honest. Um, but it just adds this extra convenience of having a separate window to do all those stuff. Um, at the end of the day, that's fine. Just make sure that uh, if you have a recording there, make sure that you're monitoring it on OBS and not on YouTube because it ends on OBS first and after that, like 30 seconds later, it's gonna end on YouTube. And if you forget about that, then there's gonna be just a black screen for 30 seconds and no one wants that. So, uh, you won't be able to hear your, your um, stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, that's fine. That's how I did it. Maybe there's a workaround. I mean, if you know one, let me know in the comments. So, um, and as you can see, everything worked perfectly. So now what we can do on YouTube is we're gonna end our stream. And and uh, YouTube gives us a little congratulations message and we can stop streaming over here after that it doesn't really matter I mean uh, it's it's uh, once the streaming stopped on you that you're free to do whatever you want with this no more pressure you can be happy yeah so we have finished our for our successful stream if you have any questions let me know in the comments and before I end the video, I would like to talk to you about a uh, one, uh, no, actually a couple of uh, tips and tricks that I had to use before uh, to, to uh, fix them. So one of them is just basically a feature of OBS, this is studio mode. This is studio mode, and studio, what studio mode allows you to do is to make a small additions to your, um, your, your scene, for example, or you can even switch between scenes if you want. So, you can, um, uh, if you want this text to go up, but you don't want to see the viewers to see you like moving the text up, then you can click on studio mode. We're in studio mode right now. If you see those two panels, and you can just move this text up, or if you want, like let's move it to the side, which is a little ugly, but whatever. Everyone has a different taste. And we're gonna scale it down a bit so that we made a small change over here. Perfect. And uh, we're gonna exit studio mode, and as you can see, it's uh, changed. The location changed over here, but uh, no one saw like the process of you doing that. So that's a, a good thing about studio mode. It allows you to make changes without the audience knowing. So that's a tip that you could potentially use. And this final, this last tip is for um, uh, for those of you who have um, who have like a slower or less powerful computer. Now this computer is very good. It's an HP MV360 from 2020. It has um, good um, good specs, good RAM, good CPU, and it handles everything pretty well. Um, but the the computer I used to have from before it was an old laptop from like way back in 2013. It had eight gigabytes of RAM, so not that much. Uh, no, actually, it had four gigabytes of RAM, so even less. And um, 
a weaker CPU, so that was pretty pretty bad. And um, well, I still managed to stream a concert on there with recordings, but it didn't handle uh, anything more than that. But the concert went pretty well. But for that, you have to apply a couple of small um, tweaks so that it works well. It's not very difficult. So let's go first to OBS settings, and we're gonna go to um, advanced. And the process priority for you is going to be set to normal. So that's how it that's how it was, how it is by default. That's how I had it for the concert that I streamed before, and it was fine. Um, if you have a weaker computer, I would like I would recommend you to set it above normal. Still, don't do it to high unless you know what you're doing, because um, I think that might create an imbalance in the system or something. I don't know. Just just I would be careful about that, but definitely you could set it to above normal, and that's going to give it more process priority, so that's going to increase um, your performance with OBS. So uh, don't hit cancel, hit apply and OK always, or just OK. That's going to apply the settings. And this last tip, this last part, uh, that works um, only on Windows, I think. I don't, I am not aware of any way to do that on Mac. You can hit Control shift escape to open the task manager. And uh, we're going to go to details, and we're going to find uh, where OBS is. So now I have two OBS running, of course, you won't have that because I'm using one of them to record my screen. So um, so let's let's assume this is the only one that's going to show up. I have two of them, you're only going to have one. So you right click on it, and you click on set priority, and do above normal as well. I already did that before, I, I should have actually kept it on normal because that's how it usually is. But um, it's going to be on normal by default probably, and you have to set it to above normal. Try not to set set it on high because that might create an imbalance in the system that's literally what it warns you about so um, set it to above normal and that actually helped me with my weaker laptop to stream something onto YouTube now um, if you have a weaker laptop it might have a weaker internet connectivity as well so try to use a, uh, an ethernet cable if you can do that and with that uh, I think that ends uh, uh, this last section of our tutorial again please subscribe to my channel if you want some uh, nice content. Of course, this video is unusually long. My usual videos are going to be probably more, more centered on that music, entertainment, and just that kind of stuff. Uh, and not those technical tutorials. I just thought it was important to, sh to share with you guys what I've learned. So, yeah, please subscribe to my channel. I don't spam a lot of videos. Maybe once a month. Best case scenario. So, with that, um, um, I can't bug my family anymore with recording, so uh, I'm gonna see you soon.